Unless you're a dweeby little squid, like me, the only anime you know of might be movies from Studio Ghibli, especially by Hayao Miyazaki. These films present delightful messages about the relationship between humans and the world around them. That's as good an excuse as any to talk about Japanese religion. Japan's most practiced religion is Shinto. About 80% of Japan participates in Shinto festivities, like Matsuri festivals and this parade of phallic imagery. But despite the spectacle, Shinto practice is mostly personal, not publicly binding. Shinto has no founding messiah and little sacred scripture. Few practitioners actually call themselves Shintoist, or literally believe in Shinto spirits, called kami. Kami extol the importance of nature by representing the environment they inhabit. Our ancestors become kami, too, tying us to our roots. In Japan, Shinto, Buddhism, and Christianity live close together and tend to blend. But for now, let's focus on Shinto and Ghibli, starting with Spirited Away. Spirited Away is flooded with imagery from Shinto, like Tori, the gates on the border of sacred spaces. At the end of the movie, spoiler alert, it turns out this guy isn't just also a dragon. He's also also a river that this girl lost her shoe in one time. He's a nature spirit, like a kami. In the otherworldly bathhouse, innumerable spirits cosmically realign. Ritual purification is a cornerstone of Shinto. The main character is also cleansed and returned to homeostasis by her experience in the other world. The symbology, themes, and characters in Spirited Away are all aesthetically Shinto, whether borrowing existing imagery or inventing new images in the same vein. Likewise, Totoro isn't a canonical Shinto figure, but as a forest sprite, he might as well be. He fits right in with the real deal. The movie My Neighbor Totoro leans on the lexicon of the local religion by personifying our environment all the way down to dust bunnies. The only supernatural entity in Totoro which doesn't represent a natural phenomenon is the cat bus, which instead adds public transport to the list of things which can get kami. Miyazaki insold transit. Bus lines in Japan are reliable enough to stand alongside natural processes in religious canon. So what's Miyazaki saying about Shinto? I like to think he's thinking what I'm thinking. Fiction can affect our perception of reality just like nonfiction and religion, but fiction has the advantage of being whatever we want it to be. Miyazaki movies are like cultural cleansing rituals reconnecting audiences to the world. Take, for instance, Pompoko. Pompoko might be the Miyazaki movie the fewest Americans have heard of, even though Disney dubbed it just like Totoro. Back in the 90s, Disney agreed to dub the next Ghibli movies whatever they were, and then got Pompoko about Tanuki, Japanese raccoon dogs with magical cojones. Pompoko did great in Japan, while every other country was like, huh, um, okay, wow, that's really on screen, isn't it? Hmm. Aside from the scrotal sex, Pompoko is right up Disney's alley. The Tanuki are losing their forests to land development and try frightening humans away with their illusions and their genitals. No matter how blatantly the Tanuki affect humanity, their work is ignored or disputed or humans take all the credit. But at least the Tanuki get a last hurrah using their power of illusion to remind the world of what once was. You might not believe raccoon dogs are literally magical beings, but Tanuki literally did get that last hurrah in our reality through Miyazaki. The movie Pompoko is that hurrah. Pompoko is fiction we can watch. It's an illusion like a Tanuki's. The Tanuki created a testament to the importance of nature via Ghibli. But in the movie, these hurrahs are ineffective. The Tanuki unleash a parade of Japanese monsters through town, but a theme park claims the parade was their publicity stunt, so the Tanuki are thwarted. Likewise, despite its vital message, the movie Pompoko is treated as just a movie. It was Japan's highest grossing movie in 1994, and maybe it did make people environmentally aware, 
But did it actually make anyone believe in Tanuki? In a broad sense, Miyazaki movies are Tanuki parades presented by theme parks, their nature in a bottle. Or, less pessimistically, watching Pompoko and realizing oneness with nature is a modern spin on Shinto ritual refreshment. See, the Tanuki walk among us. Tanuki manifest in our emotional response to Pompoko. When raccoon dogs pretend to be human, they have bags under their eyes. Check the mirror. Maybe you're a tanuki being oppressed by a society, or whatever. Making raccoons into cartoons makes raccoons part of us. Only raccoons should be able to do that. Who do you think you are, you stupid humans? The only way this makes any sense is if all you humans are raccoons! You're all stupid, evil, selfish raccoons! Shinto seems especially flexible when it comes to fiction. Shinto's personalness makes it inward-facing. 80% of Japan participates in Shinto festivities, and it doesn't matter if everyone involved has a different Shinto. This might make Shinto the perfect petri dish for cohabitation of competing ideologies. Take, for example, Inari Daibutsu, as described in the book The Fox and the Jewel by Karen A. Smyers. Inari straddles Shinto and Buddhism. A third of Japan's Shinto shrines are dedicated to Inari, but Inari is still worshipped by Japanese Buddhists, sometimes at those Shinto shrines. This is despite the Meiji-era Japanese government trying to separate Buddhism from Shinto. Inari is popular because of the diversity in interpretation. Listen to this guy. <clears throat> Inari is really a Shinto kami, but is worshipped at Toyokawa as a Buddhist deity. I don't think Inari is different from other kami, and may even be the same as the Christian god. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. Inari appears in Pompoko's parade. These foxes are Inari's messengers, and Inari is throwing rice. Smyers writes of priests complaining that people pray to the foxes thinking they're Inari. Foxes are tricksters who possess people, hardly befitting a deity proper. But since the foxes are Inari's messengers, I feel like Inari would get the prayers in the end anyway, right? The point is, Inari worship shows how Shinto sort of wraps religions in fiction so they can overlap with each other and with pop culture. And Christianity is in the mix. Check this out. KFC was one of the first fast food joints in Japan, and Colonel Sanders became an icon. Ingeniously, the chain established a tradition in Japan of getting fried chicken for Christmas dinner. Here's the colonel dressed as Santa. Of course, in America, we get Saint Nick himself showing Coca-Cola. Maybe every civilization mixes religious iconography into their pop culture. After all, religious iconography is pop culture. Or maybe I'm thinking about it too much? That's all I do here at Thinkster. I think the point I'm struggling to make here is that religion is like a tool pop culture uses to change our relationship to the world. In the worst case scenario, this can mean propaganda. In the best case scenario, this can mean reconnection to nature. But most of the time, we just get branding. Next time, I'll talk about the advertisements ingrained in our being. If that sounds cool to you, subscribe, and if that sounds really cool to you, consider joining these squidlings and elder squids supporting me on Patreon. Also, check out my website, ted-rights.com. I'm writing a story about an ultramarathon runner who bets his legs he can beat a horse in a hundred-mile race. Sayonara! <laughs>